you didn't believe anything that I said When they came, you were not prepared Then it all fell right on your head And now you're lying in your bed oh. You've got yourself in a rabbit hole You're trapped us, you did not let go You took that big Hey everybody, it's Carrie with Alice Eats the Apple And I always say, boy do I have a show for you but today, boy, do I have a show for me. So I have been, it's funny how, how things work, and I just want to kind of tell you how my guest came into my life. I have been so curious and so interested in putting the puzzle pieces together um, regarding humanity, ascension, um, the tribal, the Mayans, just people all over the world who for years actually centuries have have spoken about this time that we are currently in and 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 the guides have given it to me again in pieces so i literally sit down and i draw out this web trying to fit it all in and you know and, and where are we in the galactics and where are we like in space and why are people waking up are people waking up it seems to me they are but then again you know when you have a pink car every car you see is pink so Anyway, so I, I kind of put it out there. I put it out there. I just said, I, I want to know more, and, I, and I'm intrigued by this, and I want to focus this in. And my guest today reached out to me, and she is incredible. Her name is Von Galt. Is that not just the best name ever? And, um, well, let's go and bring, and bring her in because you, Von, you have, there are so many things that you do and so, so much in that head and that soul of yours that, you know, I don't know that I can do it, it justice. So you, tell us a little bit about you and how you got to where you are, this incredible person that knows all about this stuff. Boy. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> um, hi, everyone, and, and thank you, Carrie, for bringing me on your show. Thank you, thank you. Thank you for um, coming. definitely needs to come out, and it's time. So uh, uh, my name is Vaughn Galt, and a little bit about myself. Um, you know, there's nothing special about me. I'm a normal working mom. I work here in the Seattle area in IT. That's my full-time full profession. But on the side, I, um, I'm i an author and I write books on topics that are interesting to me. Lots of and books. I love, yeah, lots of books. And I love metaphysics. Um, and how I kind of got into um, following the, the ascension of Earth and its people um, kind of goes through 40 years of following the ascension of Earth. So I grew up in the Laotian um, family and Buddhism, uh, Mahayana, Tibetan Buddhism is a, is a very integral part of my upbringing and background. Um, and uh, tribal folklores and Buddhist um, knowledge and folklore is going all the way back to Lemuria is a very part um, of my childhood upbringing. So I've spent 40 years studying um, Buddhism and how consciousness changes your reality and puts you into a parallel reality that is in line with um, what your soul groups have um, set up for you if you choose it. So that's been not what I've been doing my whole life but and, and continue to do it. Um, then 20 years ago, about 20 years ago, I started following the works of many prominent Buddhist monks like the Dalai Lama and other prominent monks all over the world who um, kind of started this initiative to get the information about awakening ascension and just metaphysics out into the mainstream. How long so, ago was that? About 20 years ago, about they started 20, doing okay. the research. Mm -hmm. um, and they would provide themselves as a resource for mindfulness, meditation, consciousness research, um, and, and you know work with academia. Now there's so much work um, and materials that's proven um, this, but back 20, 15 or so years ago, it was still kind of early and it was called fringe science or pseudoscience. Yeah. But now that's not the term anymore because there's so much evidence. So metaphysics have cut into the mainstream and it was preparing us for the awakening. And um, as part of my research, I got into energy healing and I'm familiar with energy healing from the Eastern traditions of Qigong, 
um, Reiki, um, which are traditions that came from different Buddhist monks as well. But um, I got into research into um, Western doctors that were tapping into energy healing. And I ended up choosing um, QHHT, which is quantum healing hypnosis technique from um, the hypno hypnotherapist Dolores Cannon. Mm -hmm. And um, the reason why I chose that modality is of all the energy healing modalities that I've studied through this, um, this lifetime of work, it was the one that gave me the opportunity to talk directly to the universal one mind and ask questions. And um, one of the reasons why I reached out to you, Carrie, and others is because in my QHHT sessions, which further substantiate the ascension and awakening information that I've studied for the last 40 years, um, I'm getting archangels coming in through my session saying, it's time for you to revisit this work and, um, you know, get it out there. Okay, so yes, I think that when you get a command from an archangel, is it archangel Metatron. or arch oh, Metatron? He, from what I hear, he is the guy that lights, like lights the booster under your butt and up you go. <laughs> you know, it's like, like you, you kind of don't have a choice. <laughs> do you really? I do. I was like, what do you want from me? <laughs> and he's like, you should take it back to work. I'm like. <laughs> you know what though? I, I love that you, you, you wrote in, in, at one point you said, I didn't want my ego to get out of control. Like I didn't want to start putting a bunch of stuff out. And, and, and my response to you was, if you're worried about that, that's not going to happen. I mean, it, it is, it is, you're grounded and I mean, you're clearly grounded and that, that won't happen, but you have all of, you have such a unique perspective. And that's what I love is, is you have something different than anyone I've ever met. And I've met a lot of wonderful folks. Um, just your upbringing really creates a richness and a whole other door, you know, that takes you way down this other hall. And so, oh my goodness. So you are currently working on a book, which really speaks to me and I can't wait for this book to come out. Um, tell me a little bit about that before we jump in. Well, I just, um, I just published two books, um, in my IT profession on digital marketing and, um, and I, when I write books, I infuse a little bit of my metaphysic insight into it. And in my um, my business, my two business books I just recently published, um, I, I kind of explain that, you know, in business, there's nothing, none of this is real. It's all just a hologram. So uh, when you're buying and trading goods, what you're buying and trading is love energy. Mm. And so, you know, when the love energy is, is not meeting the expectations or uh, it's hurting people, um, it's going to be part of your life review from their perspective. And um, it hurts them in the heart because they don't really see the physical nature of the thing that you bought and sold. They see uh, it as a reflection or expression of you. Mm -hmm. So um, so I kind of go into, into that love energy and how we are all just trading compassion and love amongst each other and try to be integrous in, in your work because um, in the future, the politicians are the business people. We're starting to kind of see that in, in a yeah. roundabout way. Mm -hmm. Yeah, well, not politicians, in roundabout. yep. In the galactic age, the politicians of the future are going to be the business people, and the business people are ruled by the technology, who has the best technology. So a lot of the lamas and the gurus and, and, and the, the very high-frequency individuals of today will incarnate at some point into the future into these positions so they need to have a basic background of business integrity oh i love i love that i love i didn't i would not have put that together um because you would think it would be the other way around you know the the leaders would be the spiritual folks not anyway that's cool well yeah you, so that maybe there's a different that maybe there's a different show that we talk about business integrity yeah um no but it, uh, it's important yeah, but, it is very important, and uh, I in QHHT right now I get programmers, and they in their past lives they used to be um, monks, and now they're infusing their metaphysical knowledge into making video games. <laughs> Hopefully for the better. I have three boys, and they love the games, and they you know, anyway that's a whole other subject. That's a whole other show. <laughs> well, you know, okay, so you had said that you 
that you were regressing quite a few folks from the Tibetan background. And I don't know why that caught me off guard. I, I, I think of QHHT being such a mainstream, I, I, I wonder how do those two fuse together? And I wonder if the information that comes through those sessions are a little bit different than from a those that come through from a, I cannot talk, Christian background. I mean, do you, do you see a difference or is it, I mean, I know the soul doesn't see Christian or, you know, or Tibetan or, yeah. Yeah. So, um, the, the, the thing, the thing is, is every single QHHT practitioner will get their set of, uh, or their batch of people that has a specific theme that they're working on. Mm -hmm. Okay. Oh, so you see groups, like groups of folks come to you. Mm -hmm. Well, not groups soul of folks, but, but the, the types of people that come to me have the same typical theme. Right. And uh, many of the people that come to me for a session are um, really, really old souls. Mm -hmm. So they're either indigo or they're part of the, uh, the volunteers or they're star seeds and they're here for the first time trying to be part of the awakening and ascension process with Earth to help her out. Um, and they're just kind of here on a travel visa and they're really confused on kind of <laughs> kind of how to adjust. And, and a lot of a lot of things are very foreign to them because in their consciousness, um, you know, th this is not how people act. Uh, it's kind of primitive mm -hmm. in their eyes. Yeah. And so they're just hot. They're, they're here for, you know, their, their lifetime in this incarnation and trying to do their best to adjust to basically a foreign land, a foreign planet. So um, I get a, a lot of those type of clients that are here for direction in their ascension and awakening and trying to get direction in how to be the best version of them in whatever incarnation they came here for. Um, I also get quite a bit of people who've had past lives as um, in monasteries as monks or as priestesses mm -hmm. um, and, and 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 again they volunteered as well and you know in the Buddhist tradition uh, I know Dolores Cannon in her practice they have the, the three ways of volunteers mm -hmm. the indigos and crystals and star seeds in the Buddhist tradition we have the belief in the toku children and the Tokyo children, just in short, are basically really, really old souls um, that have reached a certain level of frequency or consciousness. And they've come back and brought some of their knowledge from the spirit world into their current incarnation to help um, raise the consciousness of everybody else. So right now, there is a surge of in, uh, coronations of Toku children in different monasteries um that's come and that's come back and they've proven themselves um because they have provided information of previous incarnations to be accurate um so we have help in the ascension process in buddhism um and the help comes from these different incarnations like um toku children like spirit guides like angels incarnating into people um like the great library librarians that are coming in, um, such as um, life planners like myself, who have come in and help you plan your life, have come in as well to help you. So there is a breadth of types of incarnations that come into Earth to help at this time, help with this tension. You know, that is like your career counselor saying okay look i'm gonna work beside you for a while so you can get this thing going so you are a life planner when you're on the other side when you're not in your skin yeah. suit yeah so it's it, before i got into qhht and getting my own um sessions for myself just to kind of you know get insight for myself i've always had um i've always had insight into some of my past lives mm -hmm. and some of my parallel and future lives and they've always been fascinating dreams but um and different monks um growing up in the monasteries that i grew up in and my mother funds a lot of monasteries in laos as well so we would go and visit some of the artwork and make sure that it's um it's kosher but um <laughs> so uh anyways but some of the, the monks have said you know um you were a life planner i don't know what that is and they're like oh what, what do i do and and they would just say you help people plan their lives and I'm like, okay. And then I um, got a regression and that's exactly what I did. I'm kind of like your travel agent. What would you like to do? 
what, what kind of excursions do you want um, while you're there? Do you want to work with your spiritual evolution? What kind of uh, lessons or um, challenges that you want to work on? Oh, you want to work on forgiveness. Okay, no problem. Um, oh, you want to work on um, making a goal and achieving it. Um, okay, no problem. You know, whatever it is, just kind of like your, your travel agent or your um, career counselor or your school guidance counselor, same exact thing. Um, not that mystical of a job. It's kind of rather boring. But, um, but you talk to these souls and you take a look at their um, kind of their um, rap sheet of what they have been doing so far, what kind of past lives, you, what kind of parallel lives have you had? Where have, where have you last stepped off of in terms of your consciousness level to reaching um, Buddhahood? And okay, based on this, these are the options that you have. So let's go and start um, developing your life plan for this incarnation. And, you know, there's obviously some suggested recommendations, but some people, you know, don't listen to their career counselor or their life planner. So free will. Um, that's fine as well. Um, but many of them go to the great library for information on um, in the Akashi records of different lives in all of the creation to kind of get some framework or some reference points for ideas of how they want to plan their lives. So how they can set up these different opportunities that will that will instigate or begin a process. Right. And you know, everybody knows this. They've had this in their in their current life. You know that some things, whether you run to it or you drag your leg, some things are supposed to happen in your life. They call them kind of synchronistic events. Like right. certain people you are going to meet, certain jobs you are going to have. Those deja vu moments are your insights that some of this was something that you planned to do. So even if you're supposed to have that car accident, to meet that person or whatever the situation is, um, even if you don't leave work, it's going to happen somehow. Happen either way. It's going to pull you out, and then you're going to be like, ah, or you don't want to go that road, but so you go another road, it still happens. Well, that I, I call those different. signposts. It, it, it is, you have these signposts, and you may take the long way around, or you might go directly to it. And and I the, there are these key factors. I wonder how many we have of those. I wonder if there if there's a set number. And, and I mean, anyway, I don't want to get too off track on that because I, I have a lot of questions about that. But yeah, maybe that's another show about the spirit world. <laughs> show number three. Well, okay, so so getting back to ascension. So when that when you and I first spoke, it was funny, I, and I have to I have to tell this, and and I'm not sure that I conveyed this to you. So you and I spoke on the phone, and I'm in my kitchen and I'm cooking getting ready for dinner and um and I have this big onion like sitting in my kitchen and I see her all the time because I'm in my kitchen all the time and and then I just had um window treatments made I hope this isn't offensive and I use Hmong tribal textiles to finish it out and so you and I are talking and you said you know my guides and you you mentioned your guides and you mentioned Kuan Yin and I'm looking at Kuan Yin and then you said something about Hmong, and, and I'm just like, okay, I need to, li it's funny, it gives me chills now. It's like, okay, ding, 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 ding. It's like, I need to listen. And, and it was just like everything lined up. And I, I, ascension to me is why we're all here. And, and I think that when you ask for things and they show up and to aid you, for you, you know, to work together, you come together. I feel like that's what this is. It's you need to get this information out. And I love that, I mean, even in a tiny way, I can help with that because I, I do believe it all lifts us up. And so, so shifting gears into that topic, um, Ascension. Okay. So, so, let, let, you know, everybody's so feeling the Schumann resonance right now and the energy vibration is going up and, you know, everybody is kind of feeling um, different um, symptoms mm -hmm. um, because Earth is raising her frequency. And if you follow the Global Consciousness Project that is um, run by HeartMath Institute mm -hmm. and funded also by um, Dr. Edgar uh, Mitchell, which was mm -hmm. the Apollo 14 astronaut, he started the Institute of Noetic Sciences. Yep. Um, so those those organizations funded and started the global consciousness project and what they did was they wanted to investigate 
oneness. They wanted to investigate how um, the heartbeats, which which is five thousand um, times stronger than your brain energy or any energy your heart is. Mm -hmm. So um, they found that in heart in the Heart Math Institute. But they wanted to understand how we are connected to Earth, and so. Um, there's like 70 points all around the all around the earth, and I think there's more now when they started this. And nothing would happen for a very long time. For probably millions of years, the earth's heartbeat what, or her heart song was 7.83 hertz, mm -hmm. okay? And that's the normal um, heartbeat of the earth, and so everybody's fine. And then all of a sudden, they started getting data, and things started changing, and she, um, she went up to... I think in um, during 9-11, she, she had a spike and all of a sudden something happened. Um, something happened in 2014, 2017, and more recently. So every time she makes these jumps, what happens is um, she is making leaps forward into the fifth dimension. She's making leaps forward into another parallel reality. So if you want to go with her, you have to also raise your level of consciousness. Yep to a certain frequency to match her vibration, okay? And there is parallel versions of everyone and parallel versions of reality. And so um, let me quickly give a, a basic background of how you understand the Schumann resonance. For some people, this is new. So a, a regular OTV is um, maybe 24 hertz, okay? So 24 frames per second, so it's kind of slow. You can kind of follow along. So if you're a low frequency and you start seeing Mandela effects or changes in your reality, you can kind of follow along and see it happening in real time. You can see the colors change, the logos change, you know, things that's happening. Um, and then when Earth changes her frequency and she goes up even more hertz, she goes up to 15 or 30 or more recently, uh, I think the last time I checked it was 50 hertz. What's happening is now she is changing the, the frames per second. She's increasing her speed. So it's, it will be just like if you got a brand new TV that has a higher resolution that now maybe has 60 hertz to 120 hertz. Now the picture quality is nicer and the frames are going much faster. So you can't follow the Mandela effect as quickly as you want to, as you did before, because now the picture is changing so quickly. And so what people are starting to see is they're starting to see, uh, did that happen? Oh, I think I just saw that. Oh, wait a minute. Did you see, did you feel, did you see, you know, they're having those kind of like those twilight moments because the picture quality is changing so fast. The energy is changing so fast. And so the only way that you would know that you had a Mandela or you shifted a parallel reality from frame to frame is if all of a sudden like a new tree shows up or somebody that you know maybe had an accident on a different leg or a different arm, um, you know, where something is different from what you had personally experienced before or remembered. So that's kind of how you, how you know now because the more she shifts her frequency up and starts taking more and more leaps towards the fifth dimension, towards another parallel higher frequency reality, um, the more people who are working on their awakening, which is um, the definition of awakening is just know that you are in a holographic reality that is responding to the commands of its user. It's you. <laughs> okay? And so, and then if you want to, uh, raise your frequency and ascend up the different levels to catch up with Earth so that you go along with her in her new experience, then what you need to do is you need to uh, work on the abundance blocks that are lowering your frequency and holding you down. So those those um, dark night of the souls, those childhood traumas, those issues that you've been holding on from lifetime after lifetime, um, or in this lifetime, those are the things that are holding down your frequency. And when you work on those abundance blocks and you kind of clear them all out one at a time and resolve them, what you become is you become your own natural radiating high frequency self that you came here in here as. Right. So everybody came in here as a certain frequency. And based on the experiences and conditioning that has been put on them, it slowly started lowering down their frequency. So if you want to catch up to the shift that Earth is making into a higher frequency, that's all you need to do is work on your abundance blocks and raising your level of consciousness and ascending up the different levels. So and, I, do you mind if I stop right there? You, you and I, are, we, we are speaking the same language, sister. That is, I, 
So I was working with a person once and, and, and we were working like, and she said, oh, we have to do one at a time. And I, and I heard Eric, I don't know if you know Eric M- Medhus, he's, a, he's, he's in spirit and he works with a bunch of folks. And he's like, if she wants to, she can also wrap them all up and throw them, you know, she can do it all at once. She's like, you know, because the universe, if you say, I have issues, they'll give you issues, you know, and, and I have all the stuff I need to work on. Okay, fine. We'll just keep, we'll keep doing it. And, and I, I think that, anyway, what I'm saying is that I think that it is almost a switch that you can just flip and say, okay, I'm done. I'm done. Take the mask yep. off. It's time. Yep. So, yep. You oh could do it. I mean, cause we're all holistic. Is this, is only one person here or you could do it in compartmentals for some people. They need to look at one abundance block at a time to understand it. And when they look and they see and they understand it, then they have clarity. Right. And then it releases that energy. For others, they just go, let's just do it all one thing. And that's fine. So everybody's a little bit different. Uh, for some people, they need to, you know, address it one at a time and, and kind of like slowly forgive one thing at a time. I was that way. I mean, yeah. it was it was a it was a I need to understand and the whys and the hows and the, and then it, they would just transmute. But it, right. it was and, and you and I, I sent you this. Um, you know, that's what my guides had said. I, that's why I was so reluctant. That's it, when there's so many times I hear about the shift and I hear people give away their power to the shift. When the shift happens, my life will be this way. And it's like, no, honey, it's the other way around. You have, you know, you have to see to believe, not, or do you believe to see? And, and it, it, meaning, it, I don't know. I, I, I think that once you clear this stuff and once you realize how wonderful life really can be and how life doesn't happen to you you're creating you do make that evolutionary and to me that's the shift it is not this big hollywood apocalyptic thing i mean that's my interpretation and everybody has their own and you're right it's based on a shift in perspective we have our abundance blocks as a global consciousness is unbalanced we have an unbalanced perspective on things and that's really what abundance blocks is, is an unbalanced perspective. And it's not, you know, when people think of um, the shift being a physical reality, again, you're thinking in 3D terms. Right. You're thinking physicality. It is a um, it is a change in your energy from your inner work that you do. So everyone has to do their own inner work to, in order to tra- transmute themselves into a parallel reality that is of the same matching vibration. So let me get into further. So earth is you know making these jumps and leaps and as the more that she makes these jumps and leaps the more if you're not working on your inner work and you're not raising your frequency the more harder it's going to be for you to catch up to her and everybody else who's in the same frequency now you know there's nothing wrong with living in the the third dimension or the fourth dimension okay everybody has you know it's just like there's nothing wrong with being in middle school versus high school versus college okay right. everybody has their own um experience that's set for them and remember you are eternal and you exist eternally anyway so there is no rush if you don't make it this time frame it's not a reflection of you not um you know passing the grade it another opportunity will come but in the meantime, try not to create a negative karma for you to work on in the next lifetime. Yeah, that's <laughs> so, true. But, but anyways, so when Earth makes these jumps, which has already been prime, uh, scientifically proven, she's making these jumps, the frequency is raising, you can see it from space. So the debate's over if Earth is making her jumps into new a new reality. Um, what happens is the energy of the Earth because it's raising, it will wake more people up. So whenever she has these um, these jumps, um, more people will wake up and they'll start going, what's what's going on? So there's going to be some confusion. And the people who's already kind of awakened in, in all of the previous ones, or like in my case, I've had Mandela effects or parallel reality shifts my whole life, but I just thought it was my own thing. I was just the crazy one. So no problem. I didn't, I had no problem with it. Um, and I just thought that, you know, my Buddhist knowledge was um, more for inner wellness and just kind of my own personal um, changes. But I never thought that more people and mass awakenings would start happening and that all of a sudden my um, ancient understanding of metaphysics from my childhood would actually become relevant. But <laughs> so now it's become relevant. So, um, so now I'm not 
the, the loony one anymore. <laughs> so, um, but anyways, that's besides the point. So more mass awakenings will start happening and more and more people are going to start wondering, you know, what, how, how do we shift parallel realities? How, how, what, what would we experience if we went into a 5D reality versus staying in a 3 or 4D reality? What is life going to be like? What do we have to do if we want to um, ascend as well? So there's all these questions that people have once they start waking up. Um, the fun stuff is obviously um, comparing Mandela effects. That's always the fun stuff. Um, yeah. But more mass awakenings will start happening and they will continue to happen as she shifts into higher and higher frequencies. So uh, remember, recently, when she started for a very long time, she was at 7.8 hertz. Now I think the last time it's kind of stabilized a little bit, but she was at 50 hertz. That's a yeah. big jump. So people are having palpitations, they have anxiety, sleepless nights, they're having um, allergy attacks, they're having all these weird things going to the doctors, nothing's wrong. Um, it's because, you know, the biggest, because we're all energy, okay, and uh, we're emitting um energy from our hearts and the when the biggest magnet which is the the planet of the earth changes her frequency it's going to affect us you know a lot of us it it, it it's interesting that you, when what i just saw is it's like and i've said this before but it's like a pot of boiling water where things the, the m molecules start going faster and faster and it's almost as if there's a little bit more space between the model the molecule mo molecules so you can see through them and i think that access to the higher dimensions i, I think more of us are becoming multi-dimensional and we know it where we may have before but we didn't know it and now it's like did i just see aunt fred you know uncle fred next to me did i just you know it's like you're you're, you're becoming I don't know. You you just have access to so much more, but so, so yeah, we're becoming. What's ha what's changing is whenever she shifts to a higher frequency, the 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 state of our brain typically for a long time was in beta. In computers, yeah. in computers and IT, beta is basically the test we're testing. <laughs> we're in test mode. We're in test mode still. But as she changes her frequency, it changes our um, energy structure and the brain waves of people who are awakened and working on the ascension are working in gamma. Okay, and when you're in hypnosis, when you get to the part where you're doing energy healing, and they've proven this in science and studying energy healing, I've done a lot of research in different modalities of energy healing, um, and a lot of consciousness research in Buddha's brain. But when you get to the part, part where you're like in meditation, you're, you're having insights from the spirit world, you're talking to the oversoul through QHHT, you change your brain waves to gamma. And gamma waves is the frequency that touches into the spirit world. And that's where you can get some of your energy healing. And you can get some of the information from the spirit world because you're touching into another dimension. And when Earth changes of frequency, these 1% of society uh, worldwide, they're functioning in a gamma wave. Mm -hmm. And that's why when they, um, you know, when they walk around, they affect the energy of their environment and the people around them and oftentimes they are um they will be around highly influential people or they just can't help it they'll, they'll be in places where um things are supposed to happen and, and i never ever try to um go to protests or anything like that but somehow i'm right there in the, right middle, in the middle of it of in the middle of it, and I'm like, I don't know what's going on. Why is everybody? <laughs> Why is everybody upset? <laughs> yeah. well, so, so okay, I I used to follow David Wilcock, and I just don't anymore. I mean, it it, it was again, it felt a lot of fear base, and I don't know if he does now still. I mean, but the information he had w was phenomenal. I mean, it was really rich, and there's there was a lot of really good stuff there. But um, and that's where I was introduced. I've always been drawn to the mayan culture um the different indigenous tribes uh, to me they're just our place holders i mean they're just beautiful and and so full of of just as what we would say mainstream would be just crazy stuff but then when you look deeper and deeper it's not so crazy there's a lot of good stuff there so how do you yeah. think that factors into the ascension process and you're you're mong i mean you're you're part of the mong you yeah. have 
yes. Hmong tribe, which so, I didn't know they were blonde Hmong. I can't say it. Hmong. Yeah, yeah. That's that goes cool. into another book that I'm actually working on, which is um, pyramids, megaliths, and tribal folklores. Uh, so I have a couple of different projects, but um, that goes. But basically, um, my background is you know I'm Laotian. I um, I was raised here in Seattle, Washington under political asylum because my family participated in the in helping um the u.s with the um cia's uh, secret war there and basically um i am from the tribe called the Hmong, which is northern laos and the Hmong tribe their um lineage they don't really know how far back it goes but um it goes back pretty far and there's a lot of folklore that gets wrapped into the Buddhist artwork in the monasteries in that area. They go all the way back to um, Lemuria is the folklore. But um, basically just, we're gonna get back to Ascension, but um, the basic background of the Hmong people is we have all these megaliths all over Northern Laos and they're called the Plain of Jars. And oh. they're, these, they're these megaliths that look like cups and they are like 30, 40, 50 feet. They're huge. And there's hundreds scattered all over in disarray in Northern Laos. The folklore is that at one point we used to exist with giants. Mm -hmm. And that was the remnants of a massive party of giants that was having just drinking and celebrating a war that they just won. However, uh, and they look like cups of lids, by the way. They do. Um, and I, I'll, I'll drop something in there because they're, they're, it is phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. So, um, so, you know, some, some um, amateur archaeologists have said because they found a couple of um, bones in there that they were funerary, but they're not funerary. There's hundreds and maybe one or two had funerary um, bones in there. But that's the folklore. Oh. However, um, go ahead. I was going to ask you too. Um, from what I understand, even deeper than that, um, they split off, and the women were harder working. The giants that they went either south or north, and the men <laughs> were the ones that were kind of drinking and partying, and and they went to a different that they went to a different spot, um, the opposite or whatever. I, I think the women went south and the men went north, and that's why the lands are flatter, and where the men were, it's more rugged and mountainous because they didn't want to pack down and prepare the earth do you know did you yeah i've heard of i've heard of those of those folklores as well but so um, i'm doing the research in different folklores all over the world from different tribals so you know, talking to different um elders of different um yeah. tribes and just kind of uh writing down their um tribal folklores like the Hmong tribe but basically um the, the the Hmong, long, long time ago, they used to be blonde Asians. Blonde Asians with blue eyes. And during tribal times, the folklore goes is that they lost a war with China, one of the dynasties in China, and they got exterminated. Um, they, they came, the Chinese came, of that dynasty came down and found every single blonde Hmong there was, even the babies, and killed them all because they didn't want them to reproduce. So the only Hmong that survives are the ones whose hair did not turn blonde permanently or they kind of slowly um, change and their eye color change because it wasn't dominant. Those were the only ones that survived. And so every couple generations in a Hmong family, you'll have a blonde or a uh, see, I just saw orb come right through you, come like this. Really? In front of you. That's a nice dust particle. <laughs> exactly. Uh -huh, dust particle. <laughs> um, anyways, um, <laughs> so talk about distractions. I, I know. Uh -huh. I, it's, <laughs> talk about thinner dimensions. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, so just to finish off the story, so um, every couple of generations, they um, a blonde or blue-eyed mom or combination will show up, and my cousin was one of them. My mom is was one of them, but it didn't survive. So how I found out about this is that um, I did a DNA ancestry test, and it came back that I thought that I was maybe partial Caucasian, maybe some Russian up there, you know, Mongolian, whatever. Um, and it came back that I was 14% um, Polynesian and um, the rest of it was basically Laos or Southeast Asia. And I argued so much with the, this, and the, um, the scientists and they, 
And they said, they said, we are 99% correct it's in our findings. We know our word. You are not Caucasian. You're full Asian. I'm like, okay. And they're like, have you, have you ever heard of, uh, we have some people who are, are Hmong. Have you ever heard of the Hmong? We have people who are Laos and they, uh, a lot of them have um, some blonde blue eyed traits in their genes. And I'm like, oh, so then I told my mom and I said, hey, are we Hmong? And she said, yeah, of course we're Hmong. And I'm like, why did you tell us? And she said, it's kind of something you don't really talk about in Laos because um, yeah. we, we it, it would kind of um, put a marker on you and you just don't want problems, you know, because a lot of the Hmong fought with the U.S. and the CIA secret wars. So they just don't want problems. So they don't talk about it. Oh, and they also, so many of them, I think they said something, uh, two thirds died because of that. I mean, we lost a lot of Hmong and that they, um, and from what I understand, in order to have the light hair, both parents have to carry the re Excessive gene. gene. Yeah, they have to carry the gene. That's really um, rare. Yeah, and um, the blonde, um, blue-eyed or mostly blonde gene in the Hmong DNA is in a different protein marker mm -hmm. than blonde Caucasians. So that's in a different protein marker as well. So what's the background of that? Why, where do they think that came from? Um, the it's folklore is always through Lemuria. Yeah. The folklore is the myriad. Now, see, my family has no recollection recollection of being um, anywhere besides Laos, but I'm fourteen percent Polynesian, which so takes us to Easter Island, family, all the way down to Polynesian Islands, where Lemuria would be. So, and I read something, and I think I think it was something you sent me um, that, that Lemuria, like the the West, came. from from Atlantis and the southeast east came from Lemuria. Did that mm -hmm. you said that's that? How the folklore, that's how the folklore goes. And the folklore goes is a lot of the megaliths technology was from the two massive ancient um, civilizations. Now most of most of the how the folklore goes and this is what I'm doing research in because I'm finding this a lot in my research with different talking to different tribal leaders and elders around the world um with their megaliths is that they don't really have recollection of um they, they most of them say that it's not them that did it but it was um maybe they were descendants of the ancient um people who who created it and um a lot of levitation technology um laser technology metaphysic type of technology was used to create those according mm -hmm. to the legends and the folklores and a lot of that information also is documented in Buddhist literature. Wow. Because yeah. according to the folklore, especially when it comes to Lemuria, according to the folklore about um, maybe like 13 or so thousand years ago, after the major flood, which is documented all over different monasteries in Laos and Thailand and in in different places of the area and these are completely separate from the western world because of the mountains um they documented the the, the flood that came through and wiped out most of the um the people in areas and the people that survived were the ones that went up to the mountain tops like tibet um they went up to northern china they went up to the mountain tops on the top of hawaii the top of uh, the polynesian islands those are the people who survived and so there's remnants of these of these people and then they um basically tried to recreate their culture from what they had and know but a lot of the information again is documented um, about metaphysics is documented in buddhist literature because that's where the free universities are my father actually got a free education and that's where he learned to write and read english um was from the buddhist monasteries that are free and loud so it's been, the tradition has been like that for a very long time and it still is like that as well um and we've had a lot of different um types of um people and monks of ways to a high frequency from the buddhist tradition like bodhi bodhidharma huang po yeshua kuan yin um a lot of different master teachers come from our universities in these buddhist monasteries um but anyways, uh, uh, that's a different topic. But basically, a lot of this stuff, again, is just folklore that goes all back to Lemuria. And um, if we don't know a lot about the pyramids of China, but they found some evidence of blonde, blue-eyed Asians in the pyramids of China. 
So, so how does that, how now, now how does that tie in? Because I know it does. How does that tie in with as ascension? Okay, so let's revisit atten- ascension because again, everybody's going to start having mass awakenings. Um, and as Earth raises the frequency even more, even more mass awakening. So if you find somebody who's just kind of awakened and they're kind of confused, you know, help them out. Um, help them get transition because they're going to be like a lot of the things that they know they're going to have to unlearn and they're going to have to relearn and, and Remember. change open mind, be more open minded. Um, and the thing is, is that um, how, how did we get here? So let's revisit 2012. OK, in the number in Buddhism, 2012, because we, we count the calendar from um, when Buddha had his enlightenment. So it, it comes out as five, 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 which is kind of like a ha 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 number like jokes on you. <laughs> oh, that's funny. Cosmic so jokes. We, we were laughing at 2012 with everybody else, but because <laughs> they were all like, what are we doing? Oh, yeah. <laughs> but anyways, anyways, um, <laughs> aside from the, the cosmic joke um, on 2012, but basically up until 2012, a lot of Buddhist uh, monks were, again, like I said earlier, were volunteering to provide this information to kind of, you know, bring that fringe science into the fold and make it more mainstream, almost kind of like choke you with information about metaphysics and that this is some real stuff. This is not woo-woo, French science, pseudoscience. Not like here. Yeah. You know. So. Go ahead. Okay. So, so anyways, from 20, from 2000 up until 2012, there was worldwide awakening ceremonies being done by different tribal um leaders around the world because they all knew about the end of this cycle and so you had um worldwide awakening awakening ceremonies i think i sent you a picture of one you of did these, uh, yeah is that um, real that is real oh my gosh i thought That's that was real. it looked like something out of star wars <laughs> i mean maybe i need to look a little closer <laughs> so the picture i sent you um is basically these monks hovered around this bell that is I, I don't know like four or five times bigger than they are and it's the biggest tuning fork <laughs> remember frequency harmonic, yeah frequency harmonic is a big part of metaphysics mm-hmm. um you know that has been kept in the buddhist tradition to um literature but it's the biggest tuning fork um is this huge bells and it sends out a certain frequency but anyways before i get to that so up until 2012 you had global awakening ceremonies from different tribals um all around the world that that still kept their information as much as they can they haven't fully been colonized and the information hasn't been wiped off so you had native american council elders you have the aboriginals of australia you have the the chiefs of easter island and the chiefs of the polynesian islands um and of course the most famous one you had the mayan council of um of elders they did their own awakening ceremonies up until then and then the very last one at 2011 you had um like the fourth and dalai lama and many of the buddhist monasteries all around the world rang their bell all of their huge huge tuning equipment and they completed their awakening ceremonies and what the awakening ceremonies that they had been waiting a long time to do was to close out the end of polarity consciousness mm, that whole duality and a polarity consciousness and welcome in welcome in a smooth transition into unity consciousness in buddhism they were re- they were welcoming the return of the maitreya buddhahood which what you know is oneness unity consciousness christ consciousness it is the energy and the consciousness of knowing that everyone in in reality is connected to one another. So all of that metaphysical research that all the Buddhist monks were going into academia, helping, going, how can I be of service? How can I, how, you want to study my brain? What do you need? What do you need? You know, all these things just to bring consciousness, mindfulness, and meditation awareness that you know, we are all connected. And when we hurt somebody else hurts, when we all as a species feel uh, anxiety, it is the sign that something's gonna happen in our 
area. That's what the Heart Math is um, Institute with um, the Global Consciousness Project of following the Schumann frequency and uh, you know following you know when impending serious things are going to happen that affect people in a certain area of the world that really comes into place a lot that kind of um, consciousness research so all that information is preparing us to the awakening of okay children it's time to wake up the game is over we're all one let's usher in the next phase which is unity consciousness which is we're welcoming in um, the next thousand years of the galactic age or in buddhism they call it the golden age okay so i jokingly say not so jokingly that it, it would be like me trying you know taking showing up at your house saying all right guys i'm taking your family to the airport and i show up and you're all still asleep and it's like i told you <laughs> told you i was going to be here we need to go and y'all are sound asleep and it's and, and and it's like saying wake up it's time to wake up and that's 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 what I have. That's how I have viewed this time of our history. Yeah. Well, see, and the thing is, it's not everybody's going to wake up at the same time. And they, some people might not wake up at all because they don't want they don't want to raise in that frequency. And that's totally fine. Remember, there's nothing wrong with third dimension. There's nothing wrong with the fourth dimension. It's just some people in their incarnation, in their journey, are ready to go, go to the fifth to move, dimension. To move on. They're ready to move into a higher frequency reality. Um, and remember, it's not a it's not a physical reality. It's an energy change. Right. It's a it's a shift. It's so a I, shift in your unbalanced perspective. So now we went from a perspective of polarity and everybody separate to all this information and science and all these different ways um, that has come in. And you know, you know, you have um, all this. You have channelers and other things that come in to help as well, just to get to this part mm -hmm. and when you shift your frequency and you shift your perspective into we're all connected and what we do connects and affects other people mm -hmm. um then after you change your energy and your perspective what happens is the actions follow and the actions are people um making better choices in the types of foods that they buy and support, the types of vehicles that they support, more energy, um, cleaner energy kind of um, initiatives. People vote or um, participate in um, policies and um, things that are more in line with the frequency that they radiate at. Um, people start infusing um, their interest in metaphysics and merging the left the right brain the left brain and bringing it more into the fold yeah. into their everyday lives so the action start following the shift in your consciousness and those actions start creating the golden age and um the next thousand years of this shift in consciousness well and and i i think too that so for example we're coming up on an election year yay um, but I think what happens is you become more, what I have found is I am no longer part of the global, I'm going to get the swine flu, I'm going to get Ebola, you know, it, all of that fear-based, you know, it becomes more, what can I affect right around me? You know, how yeah. does, because this is my world, this hologram is the only thing I can really, I mean, and that's not really true. I mean, I, I think that they're, they're, they're like these little balls that kind of float and they touch on each other. And, and so I, I think that beginning here at home, and it, it just expands out because it does, it starts with your heart and then it affects your body and then it affects and it just keeps on going. And yeah, yeah. So the, the, the Buddhist interpretation, I'll give you the Buddhist interpretation of kind of how this starts changing the reality as a whole is um, everyone is attracting to themselves exactly what they are mm -hmm. okay exactly what they radiate at and um the the thing is is that when one percent it's all it really takes is one percent of humanity into a gamma wave so you know like they've done it they've done this proven many times in meditation research that if one percent of people are meditating and focusing on something then it will um reduce the violence rate in that area so they've done over 60 different studies on meditation research proving that it only takes 1%. So basically, if like 1% of the world focuses on um, 
their awakening focuses on raising the level of consciousness and you know being the best version of who they are in the whatever incarnation they came here to experience the shift through um then what what happens is that person that's a higher frequency starts affecting those in their personal sphere and life and it helps everybody else be more calm more productive um you know just radiate at a higher frequency kind of like it's kind of like when one ship that's sunk on the on the, the, the sea comes up and lifts everybody else up because mm-hmm. it, it lights everybody else up so if those people work whoever it is could be anybody um work on just being the best version of self and, and living at a higher frequency if everybody did that all over the world what would happen is the world would light up right. and the world would shift with her and that's really how it is so you don't have to convert anybody you don't have to change anybody you just have to work on your inner wellness for yourself and you will go and attract a reality that matches you. And I, I just had a conversation with my sister. I said, how's the shift doing? She's like, I hate it. I really hate it. And I'm like, well, <laughs> you're just going to attract what you are. And she's and she's like, Ugh. she's like, Here, here's what's happening. Whenever the human frequency changes and does a spike, and they've done this with studies by looking at whenever Earth does a spike in her frequency throughout history, two things start happening. It becomes an amplifier. Mm-hmm. So if you're really positive and you're working on your awakening and ascending up your levels of consciousness, you're going to attract um, more of that positive thing that's going to happen. So in history, what they found is like we've had a, um, a renaissance whenever those spikes happen. People are more creative, they're more productive, synchronicity happens more in their life. Um, you know, they're going to have easy time with the shift. On the same time, um, people who are of lower frequency are going to attract to them more of what they are as well. So they're going to attract more negativity, more sickness, more um, things just not roadblocks, things not working out. And in history, when they looked at history, they saw that there was um, um, some of the major wars happened during these spikes. So the people who are negative attract even more negativity to themselves. So you have a little bit of both. It is an amplifier. It's, it's an algorithm. Magnet. Yeah. Yeah. So I'm like, I was, talking, I, was, I was laughing at my little sister. I said, oh, you'll be fine. Just work, just work through your issue. Because she's like, one of her things is um, she's really messy. And so she ended up attracting to herself two um, bachelors who are even more messy. And so now well, she gets <laughs> so to know now, what it's like to be the neat one. Yeah. So so she's attracting herself more of what she is, which is even more messy people, more amplification. It It got so messy it turned her clean <laughs> there you go she saw exactly what she was did not like it and decide uh, uh-huh. no more no more now her now her space is this pristine same thing goes with her finances um she, for a very long time she was not a very good budgeter and then she attracted to herself people roommates that were even worse in budgeting and so now they and so now um their financial discord worries her every single time she goes to pay her um part of the bills because she's wondering are they going to be you know come through or not and so it made her realize to and get to get her finances in order and be even more organized what a gift yeah so you attract exactly what you are so that you can decide you know is this who i want to continue to be you know so everything is very polarizing right now to um to kind of force people to decide, uh, is, is this who you want to be? Is this the character you want to be at? Is this the kind of policies, the kind of people that you want to support? Because what you choose to put into your experience, who you align with, the things that you align with in your life, you are choosing to match that frequency. Right, right. And by matching that, that frequency, that will put you into the experiences that are going to be attracted to you. So um, I'm not a very political person, but you know when they were doing um, when they were doing uh, studying the different spikes, um, they had they had a spike during the uh, um, Obama inauguration. Earth had a huge spike during that, and she how they measured it is if it hits the blue line, she's happy. If it doesn't hit the blue bell line, she's not happy. Uh, Obama administration, the uh, Women's March, she was spiked and really happy. Um, and then um, she was. She didn't even 
she didn't even hit the blue mark during the Trump inauguration. She didn't even get out of bed. <laughs> so well, she didn't you know, even get out of bed. Um, she and and then she's been spiking this month. And what's going in this Western area? What's going on this month in the Western world? Oh, I don't know. January the impeachment process. Well, I, and I don't want to get off on all that. I, I yeah, because, yeah. B, but I I feel like it is. I think part of ascension. And part of what's happening is that we're seeing systems, we're seeing corruption, we're seeing the underbelly, we're seeing, because in order, and, and I'm, I'm very vocal about this, in order to, um, you know, if you have a big sore, you don't just keep putting a Band-Aid on top of it, you have to clean it, and you have to, and that's not a very fun process. And so, it's and, not. and it's I not. feel like the trafficking is coming up, I feel like the, all the way around. I mean, we, I think politicians All pretty our deeds much, are coming up for us. Well, yeah, and I feel like politicians on a whole, I don't care. I mean, as, as James Gilliland says, it's Democrat, Republican, it's two wings to the same bird. So, okay. so there, there are a lot of things happening right now that I think. By you. <laughs> oh, I love that. I probably because I'm going, yeah. but it is. But another thing that I see this year, like just in the last two months, I see people close to me that their life has worked and because and, you know when you're in the flow you know when you're doing exactly what you're supposed to be doing meaning what your soul what you signed up to do because life I mean like doors just open and people are handing you money and people are you know you're healthy and I mean everything just lines up right and what I'm seeing is those bridges that were crossed that they you know I, one person that I'm thinking of in in particular it, it, it it's like it took her a long time to make the decision decision to do these certain things and then oh, I mean life became magic and so and yes. then now it's time for her to change again it's like okay it's time to go to the next stone and so in order to propel you sometimes we need a little more mm, you know I'm not happy yeah. and things aren't working yeah. and that's what I'm seeing right now yeah so you know I mean like I like whenever like and, and again I'm not a, I'm not a I'm a, I'm a swing voter, so I don't have any mm -hmm. affiliation. I just vote wherever the um, wherever the you're earth called, goes. Uh -huh. right? <laughs> so, so I just kind of look at like, oh, okay, well, that go there. So, but anyways, that's my own personal thing. So it doesn't really matter. Again, there's nothing wrong with third dimension. There's nothing wrong with the fourth dimension. There's nothing wrong with the fifth. Well, there's all there's always a lot of things right with fifth dimension. But everybody will go to what is right for them. It's part of their journey. Right. Okay? So the thing is, spiritual work. When you're raising your frequency, and Earth is raising her frequency, it brings up the abundance box. It brings up the issues that are weighing down your energy. So people think that when they're doing spiritual work, it's going to be all like, um, you know, flowers, flowers and so and forth. No. Yeah. And then and then all of a sudden, all their inner demons, their issues start popping up. And to like, be cleared. Um, that is spiritual work. It's going, you got to clear these things in order to raise your frequency. Exactly. So your abundance blocks are coming in. So, you know, at this time, as Earth keeps making bigger and bigger shifts from different events happening all over the world. And, you know, we have events that are, that are spiking her in the West. We have events that are spiking her in the East, in the islands, different events that are happening as well. And they're not all political. Sometimes they are earthquakes. Sometimes they are other things as well. A lot of so, yeah. um, so basically, the point is, is that as she, every time she makes a big spike, the, the split is going to be wider. And if you want to go and experience the fifth dimension and being part of creating the fifth dimension with her, you have to catch up. And um, the more you keep your lower frequency by not dealing with your inner demons and your issues and all of that kind of stuff and holding your frequency down, as she and these people, this 1% start moving up, it's just going to be harder for you to catch up. And then yeah. there's going to be the reality split. Um, like the real reality split. And, um, you know, Dr. Courtney Brown of the Farsight Institute had a team of remote viewers for the military. And they they found in their research that there was two timelines after 2013. One was a more positive, higher frequency timeline with a lot of advancements and um, changes. And the other one was more disastrous timeline. Um, and so that was that was very interesting as well. But so even in science, in all these different research that I've done, it just continues to further and further put more evidence that we are having a shift.
from the third dimension to the fifth dimension. And so one of the things that come up oftentimes, whether it doesn't matter if you get your awakening through, um, you know, through Buddhism, through studying the um, Puranas of the Hindu tradition, Zoroastrianism, uh, mysticism in Egypt, uh, sweat uh, ceremonies in uh, Native American cultures or the Celtic uh, ceremonies. It doesn't matter how you get, or even through your religions as well. It doesn't matter how you, how you get your awakening. The point is, is it's time to start, if you haven't, oh, there's another orb, start getting your awakening and start working on your ascension and your frequency so that if you want to be part of the fifth dimension and you can catch that then you are going to be part of that and if not if it's too much for you to go there there's nothing wrong with third dimension as well um because everybody has a number that they're going their life is going to be up and then you're going to review and kind of go from there so it's okay we need to get over the fear of death well yeah absolutely and and yeah we do and and my question to you is what do you think I've been to the fifth dimension. I mean, I've, 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 I was telling you about that. I've been there, I've seen it, I've talked to them, I've, you know, I've asked questions. And, um, and I can say I haven't, I don't know that I've necessarily really fully experienced it that I'm, that I'm conscious to. But my question is, so, so, so when things start to peel off and things really, as you're saying, that chasm gets larger and larger, what do you think the third dimension is like? Is it just more of the same, the war, the famine, the more of that? It's more of the low frequency stuff. Okay, that makes sense. Fear, fear based. I mean, I think fear is about the one of the lowest things we have. Yeah, yeah, and um, you know the the work by um, Dr. David R. Hawkins, mm -hmm. um, the, the very top mental health um, doctor who spent his life studying the map of consciousness and kinesiology tests, is to try to find. Um, truth versus falsehood in people. Mm -hmm. And he found that 22% of society is actually integrous. The other 78% are still working on trying to be integrous and live with integrity um, and being courageous. And so those people may not may not have the, um, the insight to feel higher energy um, people around them. Mm -hmm. And but that's part of their journey as well. And yeah. go ahead. You know, I've always felt that I mean, even way before like i mean i've always had known there was more but before i really truly embraced where i am now and uh, the path that has led me here it i always felt like they're like humanity is in like you're one of five you know the, and, and no one is stagnant i mean no one is i'm a one or i'm a five you know jesus well he may be the exception like buddha i mean that 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 consciousness would be a five but most of us go between a couple of, of them like Dr. King. I'm sure he was a four, sometimes a two, sometimes a five. You know, I mean, it's like we, we go back and forth. But they say, and I don't know who they is. Dr. King's mentor um, during his peace rally was the uh, Buddhist monk from Plum Village, um, Tic Tac Han, when he was younger. Wait, wait, say the beginning of that? Um, Dr. King's during his um, peace movement, his mentor was um, the Buddhist monk, Tic Tac Han. Really? I didn't know that. Uh, of course. Um, but that, that if you're, if you're a, let's say if you're a three, oh, you're not going to see a one. They vibrate so out of your realm and and, and you're, and you won't see a five. And yeah, so, it's happened to me. I'm not sure if it's happened to you. Yeah. I will, I will walk up to a friend on the streets and I would be waving and Hey, 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 and I'll walk up and I would have to like touch them. Cause they, and they're like, and they would freak out like, where did you come from? which I didn't see you. I'm like, I've been waving at you and walking straight towards you this whole time. And they just so didn't see I you. I get, that. I get that too. And you're right. You're right. So the uh, one thing that I, that I came across when I was studying, um, when I was, I was doing some research for this show, I was reading and I, and I've known the Mayans, there were, there were a huge population that just disappeared. They just disappeared. And, and Drimvalo Mac, Kizadek talks about that, about the, how they went to sort of an, an altar place, like a, an in-between world when things get really rough. I don't know much about that, but they were saying that Tikal, Guatemala is a place that, I mean, and in its heyday, that was the Mayan place. I mean, it was, it was huge and there were millions of people, not necessarily just right there, but there and surrounding. And that 
they said they're ju- they were just gone. Most of them were just gone. And they didn't have evidence of war. They didn't have, I mean, because you would see that. You would see the remains. You would see, you would, you know, archaeologists could can affirm that. I don't know why I'm stuttering. Anyway, so um, they, Tikal, the, the main pyramids are in the shape of the Pleiades, the star cluster, and they think that that's it because they said no, they just went home. They just they just went home. It's like their their tour was up and they just went home. So have, have you come across that? I've come across some of that as well. You know, like um, when I last time I went down to Laos to visit um, a somewhat similar story um, to visit the different Buddhist monasteries that would just finish um, with the recent artwork. Um, I went and visited this um, old temple in Northern Laos. I can't quite remember what it is. I put it on my Facebook. But anyways, um, it it was an old temple of this um, noble nobleman who had built this temple in honor of his wife, the reincarnation version of his wife. But how the story and mythology goes is that he had left to do a pilgrimage to go to the mountains, um, kind of like Mount Kalesh. Um, to, to just to go study with the monks and the monasteries and the wise men up in, in the mountains. And he was only gone for a couple months. And when he came back, she died. She had lived her whole lifetime waiting for him to come back. And so he was so brokenhearted um, that, you know, eventually he met this um, young woman who he really felt was a reincarnation of his wife. And of course, they got married, fell in love. And he built this um, small temple um, in Nor- northern Laos in honor of her and they lived there and then they passed on but how that goes is how he would be gone for only a couple months and then when he came down he was gone a whole lifetime is that he went to um, a place that was high frequency that it basically um had a shorter time frame so he went to shambhala oh that's cool what a great story yeah, so you have some of these interesting stories from these tribal folklores as well. Yeah, don't you wonder? I mean, some of it broke my heart when I when I read about Easter Island and the history and how, once again, you know, it's like, okay, we're just going to put all of these people behind the stones and you're not allowed to come out. And they enslaved them. I mean, it just seems to be that's, you know. Yeah, colonization has done some interesting things with the world, but we're fortunate enough that there is still a lot of um, tribal information still here that we can use. And, um, you know, the the Buddhist monasteries have been really fortunate in that they were basically separated from the Western world because of, um, you know, the mountains. Mm -hmm. It's so hard to get through. Um, But... Anyways, um, with the ascension of Earth, if you work on your abundance blocks, okay, whether you get a QHHT session, you get it through your different traditions, doesn't matter, and you work on your abundance box, you raise your frequency, um, what starts happening is synchronicity starts happening in your life, okay? And this is where it's really fun to start living in. Some people really want to check out. Um, they're like, I want to go into the fifth dimension. I want to go with Earth. And now I'm done living. But that's not how it is. You're going to live as long as your number is there. So whether you, you live... Make the most of it. You can make the most of it. Whether you live 80 years or 100 years or whatever your number is, you can live peacefully and make the most of it. Or you can live miserably and just basically, um, you know, not work on your own personal wellness and work on living the best version that you can with the resources that you have. So it's completely up to you how you want to live in your body right. for the time frame that you hear. So it's not like Hollywood likes to dramatize things where all of a sudden you can just check out. Okay, you incarnated for a reason. If you just wanted to check out, don't incarnate in the first place. Right. So, um, which there are many spirits that don't, they just don't want to, it, 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 they're they don't not ready for the physical appearance. And that's fine too. But anyways, um, when you start awakening and start doing your ascension work and raising your frequency, your um, soul groups, and according to Buddhism, the concept of synchronicity is that your soul groups are working together to make connections for you. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, so these seemingly unrelated 
events that seem to have a direct connection, but there's not one, um, it's your soul group making connections for you. So somebody right over here may have an issue that somebody over here can solve, and then you guys can solve each other's issues. Um, and so they see the higher version and they see where everybody is. And so they'll, they'll kind of start networking on your behalf. But it's up to you to discern if you want to take on that sign or not. So um, if you start living at a higher frequency, um, things in your life will start kind of falling into play. Like you'll think about something and then all of a sudden somebody will put on Facebook that, hey, I have tickets um, free this day to a game. And you're like, that happens to be the day that I have taken off of work. So now I'm going to go and spend my day at a football game, a Seahawks game in, in that case, that was $200 tickets that I just got for free because nobody's able to take up that ticket, but that happens to be available for me. So those kind of weird little things happen all the time for people who are raising frequency. Um, they'll start getting um, communication from the angels and from the soul groups um, through repeat angel numbers. So maybe they'll get a lot of uh, receipts that have repeat numbers. And I like to do that. I have a stack of receipts that I keep whenever I see the angel numbers, so 555, 1111, 222, 333, it doesn't matter. Um, I would get that receipt and I would sign it with like kind of wish, kind of like wishing on a, on a shooting star. Oh, I love that. So, yeah, so those are kind of fun. Um, so you'll so you'll get so you'll get that as well. So there's a lot of different ways for um, your soul groups will start working for you. So if you're working on something, whether you're working on something in your personal life to manifest um, a greater relationship for yourself or a more happy um, career for yourself, and you're starting to work on the things that are you know kind of holding you back, your abundance box in those areas, your soul groups will start seeing that you're working on it and you're putting the effort so they'll start um, aligning you with the next thing in that path so maybe all of a sudden somebody will hit you up on linkedin with a perfect opportunity that you were already working on and then you you know you just continue to take baby steps up to that um, experience. So there's a lot of different examples of synchronicity that happen in people's lives. And the more that you raise your frequency, the more synchronicity happens. And the more that you start uh, really communicating and playing with the energy of reality. And so when you understand that your inner wellness is what um, changes your frequency, and the more that you put out that higher frequency um, by being the version of you, the more your your spirit guides and angels and your whole soul group will start working with you. And then you'll start seeing that reality is basically just a feedback loop sending back to you more of what you are. Exactly. And, um, and of course, you're going to have some body symptoms where you'll see some flashes here and there. That's just part of your awakening symptoms. And the ringing. Um, ringing, you, you know, you, Everybody has a little bit different, but uh, that's part of your waking symptoms. But the more that you see these synchronicity things that are happening, which is fun, and that most people just love that, um, the more you realize that the awakening, the ascension, your master teachers, um, even at different modalities that you come across, such as QHHT, Reiki, channeling, all these different things, they're just further supporting you so that you know you are the creator of your own world and you have the ability to create your own reality and life just like the universal consciousness right. everybody you know, i call it the lord, but the lord the universal consciousness gave humans the power to um to create its own reality well exactly okay. And that, that's been the, one of the biggest things, I think, is, is t getting yourself out of the victim mindset of, oh, this happened to me, or why do I keep, why did that guy, they're always so mean. It's like, you're attracting them. What are you doing? You know, but it's hard to take ownership some, sometimes. And, and, yeah, yeah. You know, but that's, um, okay, so how do people reach you? So um, they, people can reach me, they can go to macabachakras.com mm -hmm. uh, and they can read all of my old blogs. So remember, um, up until the awakening ceremonies of 2012, um, I had followed 20 years of metaphysical research 
that Buddhist monks were participating in. So I wrote a lot of blog articles and I published it from 2011 to 2012 on face, my Facebook timeline, which if you cycle through that, you can still find some, many of that. It's like two years, at, at four hours of sleep every single night. <laughs> wow. It's like, why bother me? <laughs> um, but anyway, so I committed to, to that work. I did that. And um, so it's there, but I, I put the most shared Papa ones on the blog page of that. And a lot of the links are really old for the early research. So um, a lot of the, the, the academic research have moved on to making their own foundations, to making their own channels, et cetera. So there's more material now, which is great. But um, I'm actually putting the information into a book that I'm looking to hopefully publish later this summer called Buddhist Mandalas. Awakening with Sacred Geometry. Oh, nice. Uh, that, makes, that information is there for everybody else. And then if you want to, um, you know, you're in the Seattle area and you want a QHH session just to get your code, um, all the other modalities may not have worked for you, you know, you can reach out to me. And if, it's, if it's meant to be, then we will schedule that for you. Um, you know, you can also go to my Amazon author page, uh, which is also in this description here. Uh, for the YouTube channel, and you can, if you want to learn how to begin and send through um, using the Four Noble Truths, Faithful Path in Buddhism as a value to uh, work on your abundance blocks as well. Um, my Buddhist book is on there as well. And I'm actually working on, um, after I finish a couple other projects, I have it, my, my uh, bridge, um, another Buddhist book, which is the Buddhist Guide to Buddhahood. Uh, the three principles and seven seven stories of the Lotus Sutra, and Buddha is meant for this only small number of people who watch this who is going to be ready for Buddha because of what it means. Is it means ego death. It means letting go of the whole experience and surrendering it back to, to the Lord, and re immerse into the pure energy of the Lord. And not everybody's ready to let go of their addiction to creation. I'm okay with that. I, I'm, I came here to be yeah. separate. I, I decided it's like, I'm separate. I'm not one because yeah. I'm a human. I mean, that's why I came in human skin suit, you know? So I, I know I'm not ready for that. that. There's, there's nothing wrong with that. So a very small people are going to be ready in their incarnation to reach Buddhahood and let go of creation. But, mm -hmm. you know, um, you know, the, and let go of the game of polarity. A game of polarity, you know, spirit world, was created when the physical was created. Mm -hmm. So in order for 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 souls to and have their personal experience and the personal journeys to, um, you know, to, to Buddhahood or, or wherever level they want to be in their spiritual evolution, um, physical world is created as long with, as the opposite, the spirit world. So even if all if what you do is just kind of go back to the spirit world and be part of the spirit world, that's fine too. That's all in the consciousness of the one mind. But for some people, they may want to let go of that addiction and return to the one mind and resubmerge into that energy. Um, and that's fine too. A very small Yeshua did that, Kuan Yin, Buddha, um, many, many people in history, but in terms of all of history, not very many people are ready for that. And there's really rush uh, because we all exist infinite and at some point you are ready for that then you will if you're listening to this and this, this is the information that appeals to you then at some point in your incarnation at some time you will reach buddhahood and get there but the thing is here's the thing about about that topic is that and when people raise their frequency to like 400 500 600 700 whatever um, they raise and reset the negativity of millions of people. Yeah. Okay. Because the energy is so high. Now, um, they bust they the curve. <laughs> yeah. It resets the curve. It brings everybody, 1% brings everybody into a high reality when it lifts, everybody lifts. But the thing with somebody or the few that decide to let go and completely surrender their, um, their identity and all of the games of polarity in creation and return to um, the, the eternal energy of the Lord. When somebody does that, what they do is they raise the consciousness of all of humanity. 
So that's why Christ had the Christ consciousness. They saved that's why. all of humanity. So, but they can still pull out of that to come and yeah. be people's. I mean, it's like, it, it's not a death, really. No, it is no. Just a, it's just a different union and way of being. Yeah, yeah. So there's no, and people have to get over like, this is better, that's better. There's no better. It's just different. Yeah. Yeah. That's all. It's just well, different. Well, I mean, and, and that's, and I've been, uh, to me, the, it's just an access to a different type of consciousness, uh, 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 probably so high that we, that I can't even fathom. I mean, there are many things I can't even begin to wrap my brain around. But I think that that's part of what 20, well, the shift is bringing us is access to a higher consciousness. I mean, access to something we didn't have before. And that's why we needed the gurus and the, that's why we needed them is because they, oh had it right. but we don't and that's why and that's and that's why everybody who works on their abundance blocks raises the consciousness and beats more of who they are so if they are um the best scientist that they could be or doctor or cook or anything whatever their incarnation is um it really helps like if people like in my research of 40 years and the last 20 years doing um, metaphysical research in academia all those people were more of who they were, even if there was no payout. Yeah. You know, they did their own research. Nobody encouraged them or paid them to do their research and carve out time to find those different energy modalities um, that they found or find um, metaphysical information or work with monks. There was no incentive. They just did it because they love the material and they carve out time in their in their busy lives to be more of who they are. I and mean, because they were more of who they are and because they worked on their unbalanced perspective in different abundance blocks so that those personal issues and demons did not keep coming up in their life and being distractions mm -hmm. because they were that they were able to contribute their little piece of the puzzle and i was able to take those pieces and put them together into this big picture of this huge topic in terms of the ascension of earth and humanity so be more of who you are come and sing your note we need your note yeah. otherwise yeah. the whole there's no harmony oh that mm -hmm. was good yeah. <laughs> oh my gosh. Well, okay. You promised you'll come back. I will definitely come back. We have so many different topics. You touched on the different things. Like I said earlier, um, things have changed a little bit in my reality that now I no longer get black helicopters or yellow helicopters hovering over my house. Okay. We have to touch on this. We have to before we okay. go. I, I want to, I want to hear so about this. Annoying. <laughs> so, okay. So at what point did you start seeing the helicopters? Helicopters? Okay, you know, when the first happened, I, I, I just thought, okay, well, that was that was weird. When the second time, third time, fourth time, I, I would start to pull my, my, uh, my husband, boyfriend at the time, and said, come here and look at that yellow hop helicopter. It's right above the tree on our house, like right above the tree. And it's been sitting there for the last five minutes. I don't know what it's interested in looking at. But it happened in about 2011 to 2012. Okay. And... I don't necessarily know um, why, but some of my other friends who were also working on their ascension were also like, they would sit there and meditate at a beach that was totally empty, nobody around them. And all of a sudden, a black um, helicopter would come over and hover over them. It's just meditating, you know? You're sending um, up the signal, the bat signal. <laughs> well, that's, that's what they say is that they're like points of light and that all of a sudden that there, it is a frequency that is seen to some yeah i don't know why but there was quite a bit of that and that, that has subsided i've lived in three places and two places i've lived in had fbi agents that decided to move closer by wait wait did, did live nearby yeah <laughs> so, wow so i have no clue what that's about but if um if raising frequency and awakening is that much of a threat to people then that's fine but that has subsided why do you think that is I don't necessarily know, but I think a lot of this stuff is going to, a lot of more evidence of this stuff is start, is going to start painting a picture. But by the time we fully analyze everything and get a full picture, it will be over. Yeah, I, I agree. I agree. By the time people realize it, it it's done. Well, that's interesting. Yeah. And it could be that so many people, I mean, that is one of the beautiful things of the mass communication that we now have. You know, we, we do have access. And so a lot of, a lot of this stuff is out there. And so maybe yeah. that's it. Yeah. And, you know, I want to leave your audience one more thing. Um, when I do my QHHT sessions, and again, my QHHT sessions are just one 
of the energy healing modalities that I studied. Um, and I ended up just choosing that just because it was the one that gave me a direct connect to the oversoul so that I could have a conversation about my ascension, um, you know, research. Um, it keeps bringing the same message from everybody. And so I put it into these couple words. And this is the message that the oversoul wants everybody to know. Okay. Um, you've always been enough. You've always been enough. And use the resources and gifts all around you to create the life that you want to experience. Mm. A life full of joy and love. And the spirit world will nudge you along through synchronicity. You can do it. Okay, so that's the message that keeps coming up in my sessions. To, um, and so I hope that helps somebody out there. That's beautiful. I think it helps many. That's beautiful, mm -hmm. Vaughn. Well, this has just been incredible. And I want to thank you for, for being you and for doing this and having courage and the intellect and putting your heart oh, in these things, yeah. you know? I have people hack my computers and emails and I'm like, why are you doing this? Who's paying you? <laughs> I know. I, I don't get paid why either. Because like, we love it. Yeah, because I have the material, you right. know. So and I love metaphysics. I was I was telling somebody recently because I was a designer before, and now we're in the middle of, of doing a bunch of stuff at our house. And 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 I, I I was, you know, I toyed with the idea of hopping back in, and it's like I can't because if I do that, I I won't. I mean, I, mom, being a mom, you know, doing what I do with my three kids, that that comes first. And and there won't be room for this. And I can't. It's like a hunger. It's like a. It's like an itch. I can't quite scratch. You know. And and it just. That's this is my passion, and getting to meet yeah. people like you and learning and growing and developing. It's all part of it. And so, yeah, I just can't. I I've, I've been I've been happy just being in the background, just doing the research and infusing information through blog articles and different things like that, or putting it in my books. I've been happy just doing that. Um, but I decided again, just to come, just to provide information to like a YouTube, um, channel because, um, different archangels are coming through my sessions saying it's time to get back into this work. It's so time. It's yeah. <laughs> so the crock is cocking. So you like, agreed. Okay. All right. All right. All right. But, but, I mean, there was a nice, there was a nice low from 2012 until now where I got married. I had two children. I lived my life, you know, so ever so often throughout my life, I'll be part or you know, I'll get pulled back. Like, you know, this go to the next level journey as, you know, yeah. someone helping with the ascension of hers. <laughs> no big deal. So what did you do, do today? Oh, you know, helped with the ascension of humanity. Not much. <laughs> Not much. Yeah. Well, thank you. And, and you have a platform. So anytime you want to come on, too. I mean, don't wait to be invited. Just reach out to me. Okay? Yeah. Any of the topics that, you know, we touched on that you want to talk about more, just reach out to me and we'll, we'll you know. We'll figure we'll, that out. We'll, yeah. It's a, a big topic. It's a big topic, so. <laughs> it is a huge topic. Well, thank you again and, and have a wonderful day. And I will see you again really soon. All right, bye. Right, Take care. Mwah. See ya. Bye. <laughs>